What's up, world? It's your boy, the Bearded Brother. of the Bearded Tastings. You already know what it is. You see us sitting here virtual. Um, we've just been playing location, phone, email tag, trying to nail down something to get us together. And we just both found out it's probably best to go virtual. And so we're not chasing each other around because I've been trying to get her on the podcast for a hot minute. Um, but I have Miss Taisha Bradley here um, of Taisha Celebrity Publicist. And so we're going to talk about what a publicist is, when you need one, and how to just really maximize your time and their time. Um, I won't talk too much, but like just for the people that are just kind of ignorant to the role, what is a pub publicist and what do they do specifically? I kind of know, but I know the very like, oh, they just put you in front of stuff. <laughs> So let me get this light out of our eyes, first of all. So listen, correct. Good answer. I don't know exactly what a publicist exactly does. Like, that is everyone's answer, okay? And there's a reason for it. It's because uh, publicity, public relations is a part of communications. And communications is a whole umbrella of things like marketing, public relations, branding, like all of those things. So PR is under that market. And specifically what public relations does it is it helps businesses, brands, organizations get their stories out to the media, get their messages out, get their events out. It's basically the person who helps you um, get in contact with the media. And so that's a lot of what we do. Um, so there are other parts of being a publicist, like crisis management. You know, a lot of people think of us as the fixers or the spin doctors. Um, but that is just a part of PR. And so when I was in uh, PR for 20 so years doing corporate PR and nonprofit PR, um, I did have to wear all the hats and do all the aspects of PR, like crisis management and, um, you know, speaking to the media, um, training uh, our leaders to be able to speak to the media, training the staff on what to say and particularly what not to say to the media. Um, so it, there's just so many things. But as I um, became an entrepreneur and, you know, wanted to forge my own lane in PR, I kind of cherry picked and picked and chose chose the parts of PR and publicity um, that I love the most and that I'm the strongest at. So no short answer to that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no worries. No worries. So um, when you decided to kind of branch out on your own, you're, you just mentioned that you were able to like pick kind of what you want to specialize in. Is that like common practice in the world of PR or is that like do you just have I to kind think... of fight bullet at all? Yeah, I think just being in entrepreneurship, this is this is the thing, entrepreneurship is hard. And I think when a lot of people start out, they see what other people are doing, you know, they do a lot of benchmarking. And what you don't realize right away, and people tell you all the time, is that, you know, like, there's no right or wrong way to run your own business, you know. I like to say, who's going to check me, boo? I can do whatever I want to in my business. So if there are certain parts of my business that really bog me down or really heavy or I don't like to do, then I just stop doing those things. And the things that I was really strong at, that I really loved a lot, I just continued um, to go on and do more of those things. Um, so the things that I love the most are like pitching the media, doing, you know, um, basically pitching, you know, the direct getting people, get in front of the media, pitching a story, um, pitching, you know, anything, news, events. I really like the intensity of, you know, what am I going to say? Am I going to frame this story? You know, are they going to say yes or no? Did they say anything at all? Um, and so that's my favorite part. But of course, there's so many other things that gets you to that point that we just, you know, have to do a lot of marketing and branding. Um, because if you are going to be pitching yourself to the media and you're going to possibly be in front of millions of people, you know, we want to be ready. And so that's where a lot of people get confused um, because I do a lot of marketing and branding work and I talk about those things. 
Um, but it's so that people are what I like to call media genic, you know, appealing to the media when it's your time to shine and get your 15 minutes of fame. Right. Oh, okay. That's that's awesome. Cause yeah, um, I need to plug in. Are, can we? Is this edited? I can edit it out. Yeah. Okay. Let's edit this out for a second and let me plug in my laptop. I thought I did. Now you're good. <laughs> We should just run a commercial right now, but I got to think of one. Okay, I'm back. Perfect, perfect. Okay, or you can. Oh, you're all right. Because um, listen, entrepreneurship be like that sometimes. I used to hate sure. like doing podcast interviews and being on live because I'm like, what if my computer dies? What if this? What if that? And then I literally got on live one time, and there was this kids. And it was, oh man, over a million people watching his live. And he was literally maybe 15, 16 years old, just standing up, having a staring contest on live. And it was a million people. I said, listen, yeah. I, I, there's no way that I could just be scared because what? Worst case scenario, I could just stand there and look and get a million people watching me. Right. So, yeah. Like, hey. It's just crazy how social media works nowadays. Yeah. But. Um, we're back from our uh, commercial break. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> still sitting here with uh, Miss Taisha, and we're just talking about like what a publicist is, um, and who needs one. Because um, I know there's a lot of things that you get told in the world of entrepreneurship that you need um, at the front end, and then you get the like, I have not even done anything that needs to be done. They tell me to get this woman. Now I have her on my books. And she hasn't done a lick of her job. Um, for you, uh, I know you were on a podcast. I forget the gentleman's name. He's a pastor. Here and there. Um, uh, Chris and Johnson? Yes. Yes. So, uh, yes, Bishop coach. Chris Johnson, the greatness coach. Man, he is a bomb entrepreneur. Like, he does it all and with finesse. So great with marketing. Um, he's really someone I look up to. Um, so, yes, I was on his podcast, uh, Pastor Plus Podcast. Yeah. Yes, that's what it was. Yes, shouts out, uh, Pastor. Uh, we won't talk about my church attendance, but um, that's uh, another time. Yeah, we won't talk about that <laughs> all right, so, um, I'll do the best I can. All right, Lord, yes, you got me. He knows our heart, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, God knows my heart, y'all. So y'all leave me alone. Uh, <laughs> but um, you mentioned something just about like what you thought were easy questions that got someone so flustered that they hung up on you. Oh yeah. What are some things that like you listen to when someone was like, "Hey, I need a publicist," where you're like, "Okay, this person might be ready," or mm. they still need some polishing? Like, right. what are some things you look for for someone you're ready to work with, and someone you're like, "You got potential, but you need to be here, and you're hidden here." Right. Yes. So the first thing you need to do is be clear <laughs> on you know on your brand. It's, it will be hard for me to explain your brand to the media if you can't explain it to me easily. <laughs> and if it's, if you have to explain around and around and around, the media are not going to really understand as well. Um, so just being able to explain clearly, you know, and articulate what your brand is or your business, what your story is, your message. Um, so a lot of people just kind of don't know. They just, I just want to get on the news. I just want to get on the media. I just want to sell. And this person in particular wanted to start a t-shirt business. And so I'm like, okay, well, what makes your T-shirt business different from everyone else? Because listen, anyone with a, with Wi-Fi can start a T-shirt business these days, right? right? So what makes you different? Well, I mean, <laughs> I'm not really different. I just want to start a business to make money. Okay, well, what are your motivations? Something made you decide that you wanted to go into this business. Tell me that. Well, nothing really. I just want to make money. I'm like, listen, I cannot work. Because the number one thing that you have to absolutely have at minimum to piece of media is a story. Like, what are we even talking about here? You can be selling t-shirts and you could be selling them for a penny. You could be giving them away for free. You could be giving away for a million dollars. What is the story? Why do we want to stop 
and look and listen and then decide if we want to buy with you. And that's what this person just like didn't have, couldn't give, you know. And if you're in a place where you are, you know, looking for publicity because you're desperate to make money, just know that publicity will bring you sales, but it's not sales. It's not marketing. It's not promotions. It's not advertising. You know, it's, it's a lot of co-signing. It's the media co-signing say you are who you say you are. You have what you say you have. And a lot of people say it's pretty good. You know, <laughs> that's how we want to use the media. But if you don't have a story or you don't have a, a product or a brand or a service that you're really strong with and that you can stand behind, what you don't want is to garner all of that attention to you and you're not ready. You're deer in the headlights instead of, you know, in the spotlight on the stage. And that's what we don't want for people. There's a story um, that I tell people about, and it's about Oprah Winfrey and the O effect. And what the O effect is, is when Oprah says your name or mentions you, you go viral, you blow up, you go crazy, you get sold out, and they call it the O effect. It's a thing. The first time the O effect happened was with uh, her pedicurist who had a brand called the Foot Nanny, and she was making products. Oprah talked about Foot Nanny products on one of her shows, and this lady's website went crazy. She got orders. The website crashed, couldn't take it, you know, didn't, was not able to fulfill, like, could not handle all of that attention, the, the publicity from the O effect. Oprah herself <laughs> had to go in and help this lady get structured so that she could save her <laughs> and, you know, salvage her business. So, you know, sometimes, you know, we are wanting that attention, but then you are are you able to handle it? Is your website able to handle it? Do you have products? Can you fulfill it? You know, sure, you can go ahead and take orders, but what if you don't get them out and people start to complain and, you know, you get bad reviews online? Listen, that, that grand opening, grand closing, you know, so when you um, garner publicity for yourself, especially on like a high or a national or international level, you want to make sure that, you know, you have um, what you need in place to be able to accommodate the attention that you're going to draw. Okay, okay, but like, how do you even prepare for that? Like, you don't know you're gonna be on Oprah. Like, she could have just saw you out on the street and not said a word to you, but like, exactly. say something about the Mia brother or Aisha. Like, right. how do you So how it's you always prepare? safe to assume that Oprah's watching. So, what would you do if Oprah was watching? <laughs> what would you do? Panic. Would you have a website? <laughs> you know, would you have products up there? What would your photos look like? What would your images look like? Would you have photos of yourself? You know, would you have your backstory up there? Because, listen, that's what we're going to look for, right? The story. What does your About Us page say? Do you have a press page where you can show that you've been in the media before? Um, because that's what a lot of times people look for, to see if you've been in the media before or if you've spoken somewhere or been featured somewhere. Um, just to kind of vet you out. And a lot of times to make sure they're not bringing the crazy person to the party, right? <laughs> right. you know, oh, yeah, you're a podcast terrible. interviewer. I know you can get some wild cards on a podcast. I have before. So, you know, that kind of puts people at ease and they see what you're like. So I would definitely say have a website. But nowadays, like these links, these little smart links are like going in. Like Linktree is upgraded now. Um, Koji. You know, yeah. so as long as you have like a digital presence in some kind of dedicated link, um, that would be great it's where people can find all of your information um, as they're looking for you. Um, and, you know, as you garner attention, you have somewhere for people to go and to check you out. Um, also, a press page, you know, as you start to get media, you put that on that press page. That will get you more media because when the media is checking you out for something, if they see that you've already done press, they're a lot more likely to trust you and, you know, kind of know that you know the drill and they can see what you like and if you're a good fit right away. Those will be my main ones. But the ones that people worry about a lot are websites. What does the website look like? <laughs> And how does it function? And then a lot of people always worry about like their branding, what their logo looks like, and those kinds of things, which those are not so much important in publicity. They would be in things like memorability. You know, do people remember your logo? But people get wrapped up in a lot of the branding kind of things. But, you know, the media really wants a really good story. Um, one of my favorite news stories was about... Um, a, a local child here who uh, started an organization to uh, feed and clothe the homeless. And the story was everywhere, and it was so touching. And I could not find this kid anywhere. He didn't have a website or anything. 
But listen, it didn't matter because people were able to find and donate and mm-hmm. really support that story, like, beyond measure. So I would not let, you know, not having a website or having things perfectly stop you, especially if you have a really good story and more so if you really have it in your heart, you know, for something that you're trying to share or get attention to. Um, never let that hold you because, again, at the end of the day, um, it's going to be all about the story. People, people love a good story and you know everybody has a story to tell so when people are starting out you really need to think about like what is your story it could be anything it could be your origin story you know how you got started because no one lives your your exact life you know no one exactly grew up where you did under your circumstances with the people you know your experiences so just who you are and how you where you are right now is a story in and of itself a lot of times it's in how you tell your story. A lot of times people don't know how to tell their stories. Um, and that's another place where people can start, you know, you know your story, what is it? And the way that I learned my, my original story is by doing what I'm doing here right now. I started doing podcast interviews, answering the same kind of questions over and over again, right? And I'm like, what do right. I say? But I noticed the pattern when I'm telling my story. There were some things that I always told. Sometimes there was something that I would skip here and there. Sometimes I would tell the story and there was a part where everybody would be like, oh, okay, that's cool. You know, and I'm like, I'm keeping that part of the story in, you know. Right. Or sometimes there's a part of the story and I'm like, why did I say that? Like, that's dumb. Or like, I think it's something great and they're like, okay. And I'm like, well, maybe that's coming out of the story. So the more and more that you tell your story over and over again, the more and more you'll realize, you know, kind of what your story is. You'll naturally kind of condense it to like the highs and lows and kind of things. Um, just continue to tell your story to people, anyone who listens in podcasts, interviews, you know, when people, when you do an introduction and just pay attention to what you say all the time. And you'll just kind of naturally start to get into a room and be able to tell your story very comfortably and confidently. I love that. And of course, I can't uh, go any longer than 16 or so minutes into my podcast and not take a sip of a beer. Like, I know, yeah, I'll be tripping. Sometimes I get caught up talking and I (laughs) I low key be forgetting. So I'm like, listen. (laughs) And like, luckily, Taisha's at a a restaurant right now. I I was like, oh. (laughs) <laughs> get, my, get my drink out. What am I doing? Yes. So, yes. So, I am at Liquid Smoke in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, in the downtown Murfreesboro Square. And so, um, I've picked out three beers. I'm not going to drink them all, though. Um, to have with you guys. It's allegedly. <laughs> right. I would not judge so, you if you had three beers on my podcast. I my highly first one, it. yes, is a good old Sapporo. I have a good story about it. Can I tell my Sapporo story? Oh, yeah. I'm always okay. here for a good story. Listen, Shout out to Sapporo. It up, though. So let me tell you, I used to have a little... I bartended a lot in college. Um, we like the catering company, good old Aramark. Well, okay. well, not in college, after college. <laughs> but I worked for Aramark, so I learned <laughs> how to pour. Isn't it pretty? Let me see yours. What do you have? I got... 1929 is an amber ale, so it's okay. perfect for the fall. Right okay. now, changing into that new kind of so, so beers have seasons. <laughs> so, so listen, I like it. I like some little beer. You know what I drink, but listen, I didn't know beer had seasons, but okay. So, Sapporo is a Japanese oh, yeah. rice sure. beer. Ooh, yeah. yeah, and so the way I met Sapporo is that um, I had first moved to Baltimore, Maryland. And they have like these outdoor, indoor, outdoor kind of like markets. Um, Mm -hmm. I went to one of the markets and they had like all this fresh seafood. And so I got like a pound and a half of steamed shrimp (laughs) and what I thought was cocktail sauce. And I was there with a friend who was a cop, right? So I'm there at this place with just like all cops. (laughs) Oh, man. All right. This is not weird. Fine. You're new in town, you know, trying to meet people. It's fine. So I'm here at this thing with all these cops and I'm got my shrimp and I'm peeling it and I dip it in the cocktail sauce and just take a big bite and I'm sitting there and just all of a sudden I just started not to feel real. I was like, am I sick? Like, what is happening? Turns out it wasn't cocktail sauce. It was horseradish sauce, which is apparently like a Baltimore thing that they don't, that they dip in horseradish. Which yeah. is the hottest. Oh my gosh. 
So, you know, me thinking it's cocktail sauce, I just went in and I uh -huh. ate that horseradish and the fire that went up in me. You ever seen that episode <laughs> of The Simpsons where Homer ate that uh <laughs> that pepper? <laughs> oh, <laughs> With the yes. wax in it. <laughs> I thought it was about to go down. Like, and I just was sweating and I was like, trying to tell you know saying these police like what is wrong with me and they're like what's happening i'm like <laughs> pointing at it and they're like oh that's worse radish and so they're like did you just eat it i was like <laughs> i didn't know <laughs> and someone here. just shoved this to me <laughs> like it was like a fire extinguisher <laughs> And this mm -hmm. put that fire out, and I was like, "Oh my gosh! Thank you, thank you, thank you! It worked really well." So, if you ever get something like really hot, this Sapporo rice beer is amazing. But even after oh, the fire went out, it was really, really good. And so, like, that's been my jam since. Oh then. yeah, so, that's, that was good. That's the guardian Sapporo angel right there. <laughs> Sapporo <laughs> saved my life that day. Like horseradish, where do you do that at? Baltimore. Right, Baltimore there. They're in the league of their own. They, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, this is as good as I remember. Oh, so yeah, if you have lady Polar watchers who like girl beers, Sapporo beer is a good girl beer, and the can is really pretty, too. Oh, yeah, I love they're Sapporo. Well. Like, they're really good. Like, lagers like mm -hmm. that, they're good it's, for yeah. wings, anything with mm -hmm. any kind of level of spice in there. That's why, like, those Sackies does really well at Mexican restaurants. Uh, yeah. Mexican mm -hmm. lagers, any lagers like that. Mm -hmm. you know, that's what you prepare with your hot wings to cut that spice. You can enjoy it. Yeah. And you don't lose too much on either end. You don't wash out either flavor mm -hmm. or the wings. Yeah. It's not a. Yeah, it's a really, like, you could really just kind of tuck this down. A lot of beers I have called a lot of burps in them. They have a lot of burps in them. This doesn't. It. <laughs> It's yeah, that's super, it's super easy to drink for all the yeah. new beer drinkers. Mm -hmm. Sapporo is a great place to yeah. start. Yeah, yeah, it is. Right. And it's a lot. It's it just can too. Oh yeah, and yeah it's, it's a super lot. easy to drink. You're not going to mm -hmm. be too lit after a couple glasses. Right. Um, it, it's one of my like old faithful. When I was like, man, I really want a beer, but I don't know what I want. Oh, it's Sapporo. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I know. I'm gonna have that. I know that's gonna be good. Yes. Let me get on to that. See, agree. Um, Yay. I feel like oh yeah, we're kind of sore together. already. <laughs> <laughs> You're already up there with the best of them, baby. I'm already up there. I didn't like I didn't do the pinky up. Oh yeah, see. That's fancy. Yep, yeah, SpongeBob. <laughs> but yeah, I'm drinking this Amber Ale, which is kind of just it's not too hoppy, it's a little malty, so it has a little sweetness to it. A little roastiness, so that's why it's like burnt for fall weather. Mm. Um, yeah, it's nice and crisp outside mm. with a slight breeze, mild temperature. I really enjoy like drinking stuff like that. And beer does have seasons because you don't want to drink a 13% stout in the middle of the summer. Why not? You will be struggling. I've learned it the hard way. You will oh, be struggling. Oh, because like the heat. Mm. Okay. Yeah, and just like. The alcohol content and it's like really coffee forward, really roasty. So when you drink, the, you're like, oh, the stout is like the really weird. dark, yeah, like chocolate in the Guinness. Like, yeah, Guinness but, is a very good one. So, what's the difference between a stout and a lager? I'm interviewing you. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> appreciate it. Uh, thank you. Um, so I really don't know. Stout is your, <laughs> it's your, it's the grain and the malts and that go into. You use darker malts, so you'll get a darker color. You'll get mm. a different flavor, and you'll uh, boil it, boil everything together longer than you would like a lager or even a pilsner, like a Bud Light. Yeah, that's gonna be um, boiled and everything on a higher, on a lower temperature, but still very high. So you're not burning the grain, you're not burning the malt, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. And so you're pulling out lighter flavors. So it's really just like the grain and malt and all that. Basically the seasoning of the beer is the seasoning. There you go. Just break it down for me go. like that. Uh -huh. Seasoning. I got that. Before I'm like, yes, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. It's it's the seasoning, seasoning basically for me. to give you okay. the flavor of the beer. So you're gotcha. not gonna have old bay. That's for fish on your T-bone steak. You'll probably, probably. 
but yeah, some people might. But... Yeah, <laughs> I did learn that. I learned how to eat blue crabs there for sure. They learn how to crack them, open them, old bag. Yeah, all right. They don't have that a lot here. Yeah, I know. It, it hurts my heart. <laughs> but, but like in traditional sense, you don't have obey on thing or you don't have like your lighter seasoning on dark meat and things like that because that might not you might not get that flavor you think you're expecting on your steak as you would on crab legs. So you don't want to do that with beer. You can get some interesting things, but you're not going to get what you're supposed to, especially if you're trying to make a stout or you're trying to make a lager. Um, you can do different things to change it up, but that's when you get really sciencey, and that's stuff I'm still learning now as I do work in the industry. I'm starting to learn that stuff now. Um, so I think that's really interesting. Um, but going back to like uh, <laughs> PR work, when someone approaches you, uh, do you prefer someone to be really in the industry or are they just kind of like it? Like if someone's really outdoorsy, but they don't work in an outdoors place, but they want to do PR for their hiking side business. Right. Do you, do you like kind of question that? You're just like, oh, well, whatever. Um, uh, kind of, well, whatever. <laughs> in a sense, I mean, like, so people are multi-passionate, you know, I'm the queen of being multi-passionate and having different interests and different things going on. Um, and so I feel like, you know, it doesn't matter. I think it's even better if you're a multi-passionate person, um, because that means that you have a hand in a lot of things and you probably have a lot of stories that you can tell or a lot of stories that can kind of, you know, feed and, you know, grow each other that, um, that you could do. Um, so I don't think you have to have a specific like lane or a niche or anything to get PR, but if you are using publicity because you are trying to grow a business, or you're trying to scale or you're trying to, you know, get more income or, you know, get partners. You want to be strategic with what you are going to do. At minimum, you want to at least uh, make sure that you're able to monetize the attention that you're getting for publicity. I, I like the um, this little quote I heard. I'm pretty sure I heard it in a rap song, but I tried to pay attention, but attention paid me. I'm pretty sure that's a little way. But so, yeah. Sometimes it's hard to pay attention. Sometimes it's hard to sell things and market and, you know, do things like that. But publicity, you know, you get one article in the newspaper or, you know, on, on online and it can change the game with everything and really move the needle. Um, so at minimum, you know, if you're going to be out there doing publicity, pitching, you know, responding to media and things like that, at minimum, have something to sell. You know, have something for your audience to do, even if that is, you know, having a website um, with a blog or having a blog and you just have affiliate links and articles. Like if you're going to be drawing attention to yourself and people are going to be coming to you, what do you want them to do? At minimum, have them give you some money if you can't think of anything else. Giving me money is always a call to action, you know, and it doesn't always have to be a product or, a, you know, a service. Again, um, affiliate marketing is something that I do myself. And it's also something that I teach my clients as well, because, all right, now that you have all this attention, how can we maximize this like all the way possible? All these people are looking at you. They see you as an expert in some area. What can you offer them? Can you offer them some links to some tools that you use, you know, that you really like that you're using your business? You know, do you have affiliate accounts for that? If you're going to be referring people anyway, hey, get a couple of dollars <laughs> off of that. Um, one of the ones that I use that I make a lot of money for, I wouldn't say a lot, but I would say the most is fanatics. Um, and that's sports, you know, that's sports. And you would think like, all right, so you're a publicist. How does that fit in? You know, but listen, it's just social media. People follow me. They listen to me. They want to know what I have to say about things sometimes. And so when I do watch sports, you know, um, if, you know, some watching and someone wins the game, you know, whoever wins the game or the big tournament or whatever, um, everybody's really hyped about it. I'm not a huge football fan, but I know lots of people who are, <laughs> you know, and we're watching the Super Bowl. And so the second someone wins the Super Bowl, you know what Fanatics does? They release this line of, you know, like the Super Bowl winners. And guess who's on there uh, posting things? Like, hey, guys, I watched the Super Bowl, blah, 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 won. You know, and I can post links to T-shirts, hats, pajamas, all kinds of things. Just because people are already listening to me, they follow me. 
they're already watching the football game as well. Everybody knows what Fanatic is, so they kind of trust it. So they're like, hey, Taisha posted these cute pajamas, you know, from Fanatics for, you know, Super Bowl winner. And they'll go buy it, and, you know, I'll get 10%, 15% just from, you know, talking about something that people are already talking about. And that's the thing with, you know, with like publicity, at minimum, be able to convert your audience to do something, get their email address at minimum so that you can hit them up when you do have something to offer or something to sell. Um, I think a lot of times people get publicity, um, you know, they'll get like a news story for their business and, you know, it'll publish and they'll share it with mom and grandma and they'll share it on social media, maybe send it out an email, put it up in LinkedIn, and then they just kind of let it go. And it's just gone, you know. That's a huge asset. And what I tell people is repurpose, reshare. Everybody didn't see your article in Forbes. I promise you, everybody didn't see it. Even though it was last year, Forbes is still popping this year. Post it again. I guarantee you that you have more followers this year than you did last year. Those people never saw that article. Reshare it if something comes out. Um, that's relative to like an interview that you've done before, an article, a podcast, reshare it. Everybody didn't see it. I think everybody's getting real wrapped up in like the content. Gotta make content, gotta make content, gotta make content. Well, like eventually you're going to have content out there. And, put, you know, press is one of the ones, the content that you're going to like always reuse. It's always relevant. Um, and I think a lot of people put that to the wayside. And so I encourage people to continue to use that and recycle what they've already done. Um, by doing a press page. If you go to my press page, you'll see like articles um, that I've been mentioned in. You'll see podcast episodes that I've been mentioned that I've done, like a lot of those things. And you'll see me reshare them too, because did you hear the podcast episode that I did uh, with uh, what I was talking about um, Ray Lewis? I was I was at a party at his house, star studded party, surreal night. Did you hear that? Did you read that? See? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So if I shared it again <laughs> and I captioned it maybe a certain way, you'd be like, oh, wait a minute. I never saw this. So prime example, you know, you have you did see the Pastor Plus podcast I was on, but you didn't listen to the audio podcast that I was on that particular episode. You see what I mean? So if, if I shared it, it would be new to you. Right. right. New information. You would probably see me in a different perspective, especially after living in that one. <laughs> So, yeah, so continue continue to reshare that. Did you see my article that was in Forbes? I did, but yeah. You did? You got that? What about good housekeeping? I didn't, yeah. See what I'm saying? So if I reshared it, it would be new to you. Y'all see what I'm saying? You see where I'm going here with that? People, you know, they kind of let it go. And that's like a really valuable commodity. People will believe the news over you any day. (laughs) Any day. Especially if you're doing an event as well. I love event publicity. Um, I like to host a lot of events um, for my community, but I will say that a lot of the reason why they are so successful and well attended is because I send out press releases to the media. I tell them that I have photo opportunities and I spell them out. Hey, great photo opportunities. I'm going to have an African-American Santa, you know, giving, you know, toys away to the kids. That'll be a great photo op. Won't you send a photographer? You know, I'm going to have this car dealership that's going to be, you know, bringing Lamborghinis out or whatever. That would be a great photo. You know what I mean? You kind of paint the picture for them. Because if you can imagine, they probably get 100,000 emails a week, you know, with the story, with the come, I'm opening my store, come cover it. Well, for what? Well, what's going to be there? You know, what are we going to, what's the camera going to? take pictures of video of so a lot of times the media are looking for stories especially local media but you really have to paint the picture for them like you can't just be like pull up on us and they pull up (laughs) right yeah no this ain't your own boy home girl we like oh we can't come pull up yeah Uh, that is an interesting take on like content like i never really thought about that because there's been a few articles i've been in with voyage um, I've been in Canvas Rebel recently um, and things like that. And I do have I have it on my blog where you can go access the, uh, the um, interviews and things like that. But, like, I do think about it. I'm like, man, I just don't want to hit people over the head. So it's like, 
do you have like a specific cadence for your press releases? Like you want to share out when you post something on Facebook? You're like, oh, I'm just going to post it once this week. I'm going to post it again next week. Or do you just kind of be like, I need to put no, something out there. I'm, I'm I've tried it. to do that. I've tried to do that. Again, that's that entrepreneurship thing where what do people, you know, do? What's too much? What's not enough? Listen, how I feel. <laughs> if I feel like I have something coming up and I'm, and I'm launching something, Listen, prepare to be sick of me. If you, if it's too much for you, unfollow me. <laughs> but, you know, a lot of times people need to see something seven times. It passes through their feet seven times before they're like, oh, what is this? You know, I have, I'll have i have an event and I'll do so much marketing and promotion. And there'll still be someone who said that they, they just didn't see it or they saw it and they I didn't know what it was, you know. <laughs> oh, I'm good for that. Like, yeah, but then they'll see I'll it on the media. Right. Right, or they, I didn't know what it was, and you really kind of don't pay attention. So I'm those, good to you know, forget some. Right. So. To see those oh, yeah, I saw that. I meant to read it. I forgot. Yeah, and then remember, you know, the algorithm thing, right? We have no control over the algorithm. So you don't know what people are seeing really and when. Everyone is not seeing that post if you have a 1,000 followers. You know, if Facebook and Instagram feel like it, they'll only send it to 200 people because you haven't been on there in a while. You know, so because hey, you shared I'm, it, I'm gonna call them out. <laughs> okay, hey, another right. time. I used to work you know, for them. That's why I know. See, so. that's what I'm saying. So you sometimes people will never even have seen your stuff, even if you post it. So just keep posting it. This is when you stop posting it. When everybody says, "Listen, I'm tired of this article." How often does that happen? Never, because what can you do? You can just lose it for thirty somebody for thirty days, or you know, right. like that. I stopped worried about that. I stop worried about it, and usually, and what I notice is that when a lot of like, um, like the great online entrepreneurs are about to launch, they're online like crazy. They're posting stories, newsletter. You, you notice that, right? You be like, something's they about to yep. do something. You know what I mean? That's kind of how you know, because it's hard to like do, be like that all the time, on it, on it, on it. But I just watch people, and like they'll they'll post it. You know, they'll be on on publishing, publishing, sending emails text messages, everything, and then they'll kind of launch, and that'll go, and then it'll kind of quiet down, and it'll be quiet again. You know, they take their foot off the gas, and they kind of chill and nurture the audience that they've already got, you know, and then when they're through with that, they kind of put the foot, put the foot on the gas, and I do the same thing with publicity. Like, I'm really good at what I do, so, like, if I don't want any attention, you know, on a project that I'm doing or working on or anything right now, like, I don't share my news, <laughs> you know, I, it's not ready. I don't want the attention. But when I have some things going on, like now I have like a lot of events for the fall. Like, listen, pedal to the metal. <laughs> it's, it's pop out season. You know, you just kind of pop out. You do your publicity. You know, I'll start pitching, um, pitching myself. You know, to different places, and people be like, "Lord, it's your season. You everywhere. You ever well, listen? That's me. <laughs> I'm actually doing that. You know." And a lot of people think that, you know, some people just get lucky or they're waiting their turn or, you know, they're waiting for the once every five years that the media calls them and be like, hey, we're doing a story. Would you be interested? You don't have to wait for that opportunity. You can hit them up every week if you like, as long as you are being helpful, you know, and not just, hey, can you cover a story about me? Hey, can you cover a story about me? Hey, I'm having this. Could you, could you come? Like, that's annoying for anybody. But if you're like, hey, you know, it's Kramer. I just want to let you know what I have going on this month. It's October, Oktoberfest. You know, here's some things that I have going on or things that you should probably know about or blah, 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 blah. Thanks, bye. People, what they don't know is that you can make friends with the media. Like, imagine having to write five, ten stories every two, three days. Like, somebody help me right give me some ideas give me some joggers so they're looking for people to help them you know get ideas get stories know what's going on on the ground like these are real people um and so they always appreciate people who are knowledgeable and professional to offer them help like who would say no to that so you could definitely you know introduce yourself um you know, to like a local media person and say, hey, my name is Kramer Deans. I have the Bearded Podcast, um, Bearded Tastings Podcast, you know, I'm a beer connoisseur. You know, if you're ever doing a story, you know, on beer in the area, please let me know. I'd be happy to give you some commentary. That's it. They might not say anything back, but if it's somebody who writes stories, you know, you would want to send that to like a culture person or a restaurant culture. They might not say anything back, but I guarantee you they're going to save 
your email for another time for when something pops up <laughs> and they're going to be like, oh, I need an Oktoberfest story. Oh, that was somebody emailed me. Let me see Beard Podcast. Ah, oh, here he is. It could be a month later. It could be a year later. You just kind of never know. You just put yourself out there as a source. The technical word is a source to the media to say, hey, I'm someone um, who has a special a specialty in an area and I, you know, I can be a source for you. <laughs> Nobody's gonna say no. Leave me alone. Okay. You know, of course they're like, all right. Well, I'll keep your information. And sometimes they'll call. Sometimes they won't. You know. Sometimes you can build a, a, an amazing relationship with a person in the media just by helping them out. And listen, when the media does you a square, you want that favor back. You know, because it's gonna be something, something really good. Something really good. I've had an opportunity um, to do an interview with Angela Bassett because of her relationship that I had with a, um, a producer from Amazon TV because she would contact me and say, hey, um, this is another thing. Um, the media uses BIPOC, that uh, acronym, B-I-P-O-C. <laughs> um, they use it in the beer world too. Okay, so you, so listen, I'm not saying that that's I what I use. I have. But when you're talking and they're talking, that's the term that they use. But they're always looking for a BIPOC sources, you know, uh, media. And so I've kind of cornered the market on that a little bit. So like when local media or even, you know, national media sometimes need someone and they're looking for um, people of color to give a commentary to be on the show, they will reach out to me directly and ask me, do I know someone or do I have a recommendation? And from giving those recommendations, Sometimes I'll get an opportunity, you know, on the side too. Like, hey, do you have somebody who can interview Angela Bass? And I'm like, yeah, me. <laughs> right. Can I? Do? <laughs> like, absolutely. You would want to. Uh, yes. <laughs> Favorite actress ever. So just, you know, having Put that out in the world for myself too. Put it out and just having relationships and being helpful with the media, you know, can take you a long way because when they pay you that favor back, like, man, it could take you, you know, to another level. Oh, no. yeah. I love that. I love the interview, Angela Bassett. Yeah, Angela, if you're watching this podcast, let me talk to you about beer. <laughs> if I know anybody, call they four. didn't let me ask my own questions, <laughs> but well, of course, still, the questions that they asked got a big reaction out of her. So apparently, they had better questions than I did. <laughs> so, oh yeah, they looked you up probably be like, oh, okay, let's see what she talked about. Oh, oh yeah. This. Well, you know, they knew me already, but they, they had yeah. a script, so I didn't get to just ask her whatever I wanted to. I had to ask the questions that they provided, which again, gotcha, was probably gotcha. a good thing, because I probably would have asked her something crazy. <laughs> a wild question. I love those interviews. Like, like a behind-the-scenes question. She was like, dang, like... <laughs> you know that? Who told right. you? <laughs> Right, they wanted to talk, they wanted me to talk about American Horror Story, and I was a big fan, so it was fine. But you know, I wanted to go way, I wanted to go way back. <laughs> but, I can only imagine what Angela. Yes, I know. She Angela, I want yes. to ask her. Oh, she is just <laughs> even more amazing. Oh God, like that's so cool, goddess. <laughs> oh yeah, I can only imagine. Like I. Like, I'd be oh, really awesome. shocked if someone said anything bad about her. Like, yeah, she's, not, she's I, everything. She I think my feelings would be hurt. Star power. You know, I like to tell people that. I'm attracted to that. But that's why I'm a publicist. Like, star power. I, I feel it in people. I can see it in people, you know. I can tell when someone has something special about them. A lot of times, even before they see it, you know, or before they know. And I just think that, like, it's a gift. And I, I feel like publicity is like my purpose, you know. Um, and at first I was like, how do I do that? All right, well, I'm working, you know, PR and I have a career in that. And while that was fine, I still had to color in between the lines. And like, I'm a creative, you know, I'm from a family of creative. I'm from a family um, of musicians, you know, I have a family member who's a celebrity. So I've seen like the lights, camera, action, you know, all along I knew you know, what was out there and, you know, but, you know, from the South, you know, you go to school, you get a good education, you get a good corporate job and that's what you do. Um, yep. But, you know, and I know that being a corporate job and killing it, I would still always feel like it was killing me too. So when entrepreneurship came on the table, I kind of leaned into it. 
And um, it was from a layoff from like the, the biggest, best job that I ever had. And while I thought that I would have been devastated for that to come down the pipeline, I actually was eerily relieved when I got laid off. Like, I thought that I was in shock or something. <laughs> I thought that I was in shock. So at the meeting, you know, they're like, let me know. And I'm like, okay. You know, they gave me like a 90 days heads up. So I'm like, well, it's not like, you know, I can't come back tomorrow. But, you know, budgets cuts. It was during one of those times, uh, like the economy was like tanking. It was a nonprofit. But like, it was a kind of like a sense of relief. And I was like, all right, maybe this is my time to, you know, kind of try to go for it. Um, and I did for like a year and a half, but you know, like a lot of entrepreneurs, it gets hard, you know, sometimes you'll be on and you can be making some grants in a month. And sometimes one month is like, you could be only, <laughs> so, right. you know, it gets, it gets scary sometimes. So I will say like, like from 2011, um, up until now, like I've been in and out of corporate sometimes, you know, sometimes it's, you know, you get scared and you go back, you know, and then you remember like what you're supposed to be doing and you feel painted in and you go out and you give it all the world again, you know, and I just want right. people to know that it's okay to do that, you know, shame in your game. There's nothing wrong with leaving a job to do your entrepreneur thing. There's nothing wrong with going back <laughs> in the meantime because if you're a serious entrepreneur i mean like a true entrepreneur like it'll always be in you you'll always be thinking of what you can do to get your business to the next level and if having a nine to five or six to ten is what can help you fund your business or get what you need to do listen i'm all for it <laughs> I'm all for right it. oh i i definitely know it and even like my wife knows it she has a uh thrifting business called eva may mm -hmm. so. yeah i follow Oh yeah, so yeah. and I have a bit of brother, so we both yeah. jumped into that like fear together. Where it's nice. like, uh, like last year, you probably didn't know I had a beer collaboration with the, one of the top breweries in the state uh, last year, and I took that collab up to Pittsburgh. Nice. And so just kind of like you talking about like some people might not even know that like I'm in the national scene. Uh, right. I got in that probably about eight months ago talking about nice. my collaboration. Only because I saw the best of and I saw the best collaboration pick. Uh huh. Yeah. And I didn't agree with it. So I, <laughs> you didn't agree with it. And I wrote the, I wrote the, uh, right. I was like, hey, this whole collaboration, I literally used everyone from the state of, in the city of Nashville. Right. One of y'all chose didn't. But I just want to let you know because you're right. a class. And you know what? That mm -hmm. happens a lot. And as a professional in your industry, it really is your responsibility, your duty to make sure that reporting is fair and accurate. So something that you could do is be a source. Um, you can also be a contributor. So many entrepreneurs, um, big time entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. are contributing writers for different publications. Nicole Walters, um, she writes for Forbes, you know. You could definitely do that. You know, why wouldn't you? You you don't need your permission to be in Forbes when you write for Forbes. And you don't have to be like an, you know, an author or any of those things. You need to apply. Um, and then they approve, they approve you or not. So, um, and that's, listen, let me get on this. That's a loophole um, where a lot of things happen where, have you ever been on like Instagram and you can get like the pay $99 guaranteed ABC, NBC, you know, box guaranteed. That is because those people have, are contributing writers for those different publications. Now it might be ABC in a uh, Cracker Jack, New Jersey, and you're in <laughs> Tennessee. You know what I mean? They don't say that it's, it could be their local channel. And so that's why I tell people so much, do not pay for that, you know, that guaranteed thing, because it doesn't hit the same, <laughs> you know, right. when you're doing a small article, you know, and it's just a contributing writer, that person doesn't really have a lot of followers, they might not even get paid to write for that, which is why they're trying to get $97 out of you, as opposed to actual Fox coming and, you know, coming to you and doing an interview. That's a whole different ball game, a whole different... Um, audience like it's really apples and oranges um, and so you know I, if you follow me on instagram you'll see that i do like reels and tiktoks and funny things about not paying you know people for that because that's why you can become a contributing writer on your own for free like why pay someone <laughs> who 
who's already done that to write an article about you that's not really going to go places like you think it is so that is a that's a big entrepreneur hack is to you know go to different places and become a contributing writer one of the easiest and biggest places to go is to medium medium medium.com and apply to be a contributing writer like they just really not gonna say no well they might but it's really hard (laughs) see kivo daily kivo daily is another one that's pretty easy to get into oh yes please send me those so i can put that in the description you can become a writer and you can write your own articles and say what you want to say you can plug yourself you know as long as it's not too shameless um you know you can plug in like your affiliate links as long as they're relevant you know you can be the media the internet like has made everything so accessible now you know there's really not anything that you can't do one point in time that you would have to go to be on a talk show now you can remote in they have remote audiences now you know right so yeah nothing is off limits and i say the, the pandemic changed that a lot like people were doing remotes every now and then but not really but now it's like not a big deal at all to have people remote in you know on tv shows on award shows you know there's there's right, yeah, there's, there's never been a, a better media time. tour anymore. Yeah, there's never been a better time to you know try to get yourself in front of the media because it's just so easy. Like the access is, is so easy. Well, like as uh, someone in PR for such as yourself, like how did the pandemic help and like kind of just hinder your growth as an individual PR agent? say the hinder part was uh the the events thing like i was really killing it with events um i was helping people understand more what i do as a publicist by showing them by hosting these um vendor events with black minority entrepreneurs and then inviting all of my media friends so then people you know they're like i was on the news i was in the newspaper you know everywhere that i would go to talk about the show i would take people with me so a lot of times it was their first time being on tv or their first time being inside of a radio station the first time being on a podcast you know and they really got an idea of like okay outside of like the marketing and the events this is what taisha does this is what really moved the needle um i have a lady um who i was working with um, for one of my actually my first event and i just have such a heart for people in the community and entrepreneurs i'm from a family background entrepreneurs and you know man it's tough um, but there was a lady that I saw on Facebook, and she was selling cookies and uh, cakes. Yes, yeah, she was selling cookies and cakes. She um, had shared that she was on furlough from um, her job. You know, it was during that time that, that they were doing the furloughs, and the people weren't, like, getting their paychecks. And she, you know, was a home baker, and she was doing that. So I was having this event. I asked her, you know, would you like to be at the event? Um, she said, sure. I said, listen, don't even worry about paying a fee. You know, because I know you're trying to, like, get up some things. And I was like, matter of fact, I'll give you some money for some ingredients, too. Like, you know, so you can, like, make some couple dozen cookies, come out, sell, you know, let people know that you're out here and what you're doing. And so she said, okay, sure. She ended up not needing the ingredients, but I still waived her fee. I wanted you to do that. And she came. And I asked her one thing. I said, could you please whip up some cinnamon rolls? Because girl likes cinnamon rolls. <laughs> You know, the old fashioned, like school cinnamon rolls. And so she says, Well, oh, yeah. I don't, my husband makes cinnamon rolls. Her husband makes two. I'll, I'll get him to show me his recipe. So not only did she show up with the cookie, she showed up with my cinnamon rolls, praise the Lord. And she made some extra cinnamon rolls as well because something happened and they like released the checks and she was able to get some money and like go off. Get to the event, she sells out in maybe like an hour and a half. Not my cinnamon rolls. <laughs> so she's like, what do I do? Should I like go home and get some ingredients and come back and bake some more cookies? Because I made sure like she was she was in like a commercial kitchen. Did not know that she had never been in a commercial kitchen before. So that blessed her a whole lot, you know, to be in there feeling all official, serving cookies through the window. Said, real, Listen, you don't have to, you don't have time for that. Like this event is four hours. You don't have time to do that. Just take orders. She was like, You think people would do that? I'm like, yeah, everybody's walking around talking about how good the cookies are, how good the cinnamon rolls are, where'd you get the cinnamon rolls? I told my husband, go put my cinnamon rolls in the car. Because if they come up missing, like, it's problems. <laughs> Somebody's going to come up missing. My yes, cinnamon rolls missing, one of y'all right. missing. <laughs> <laughs> what she didn't know was that when I sent out my press releases, I told her story. Because what I was doing was inspired by people like her. 
You know, people just trying to make it, trying to do a little entrepreneur. You got a little talent and a prayer <laughs> trying to get through, right? So I told them her story, and they did a story on her, and she was featured, had a huge story um, on her in the Tennessee, the Tennessee Tribune. The Tennessee Tribune. <coughs> I get that wrong. I think the Tennessee, the Tennessee Tribune, or the Tennessee, one of the two. I get a lot of press. It's still amazing. That's still Shout a goal out to of both mine. of them. one of them. So, so this was two years ago. Since then, she has left her job. She works in her business full time. Has a food truck. Has done so many business um, business deals with like the city. You know, providing cookies and muffins, and she has done fabulously. And not because. <laughs> You know, of course, because she's talented and her food is wonderful. But the power and the reach of the media were able to tell so many people all at once about her story. And there were so many people who could empathize with that, you know, that it just really shined a light on her. And people could relate to that. They could empathize to that. That's the hook, right? The cookies and the cinnamon rolls, like that is the line in the sink, baby. <laughs> so not only is it a right. great story, but she has a great product and service with it as well. Like that's the that's the trifecta, you know, of it that you really want to do. So um, that's just like one amazing story where you can just see how, you know, the power and reach of media can help that. Without that, only the people, you know, the 250 people who came that day would have met her and saw her. But because I told her that story and the media published that, you know, how many hundreds of thousands of people could have seen that story by now? Because it's still up. I still repost it sometimes. Because why not? <laughs> it happened. <laughs> right. So, yeah, listen, oh. let National Cinema Roll Day go by. I will I repost that whole article because it makes me think of it. So, when you ask, like, you know, how often do I post or what do I do? Um, one of my favorite things that I use is a calendar called nationaltoday.com. And every day it tells you kind of like what's going on. And while I may not say, hey, today is National Cinema Roll Day, so I'm posting this story, but it'll make me say, ah, tomorrow's National Cinema Roll Day. Maybe I should post that, repost that that article about the cinema rolls. You see what I mean? It's like a memory jogger kind of thing. So I'm not oh, like sharing this, sharing cool. that. It's like memories so, on Facebook. Yeah, kind of in a way, but you can go check it. Like you, I would recommend people just go ahead and go to November. I use it to plan content. Just go to November and go to November 1st. What celebrations are November 1st? Okay, based on the things that are November 1st, you know, if it's National Apple Day, and I'm like, all right, I could need to make some content. I have, you know, a week or so out of it. National Apple Day, I don't know. I like apple beer. Oh, maybe I'll do a review on this apple beer. And so you don't have to say, hey, it's National Apple Day, and here's apple. But it, it'll give you, like, an idea of, like, something to do without having to say, oh, what am I going to do? What beer am I going to choose? You know, what am I going to talk about? And then if you use the hashtags, it'll help it go even further because usually people are using those hashtags for that event that day um, as well, which will get you a lot more, you know, kind of things. So you could do like a beer review, you know, an apple day, an apple beer, and just use hashtag, you know, National Beer Day. And so, you know, anybody following that hashtag, especially that day, will start to see your post. So that's like a little kind of content hack as well. So many people tell me that they have issues with ideas. I can't think of what to post. I can't think of what to make. I can't think of what to talk about. Well, listen, me either. I go to nationaltoday.com and see what's going on and see what it makes cross my mind. And then, if I, you know, then I'm like, oh, I, should, I can do that, you know. I just do that. Uh, that's, oh, that's interesting. I never heard of that. It's called National Today? Yep. Nationaltoday.com. It's a free website. Okay, interesting. I'm having to use that somewhere. I'm just yep. when you can't right think, now. yeah. When you can't think, you can even search things. You can even search like beer and anything that is related to like beer or beer holidays or beer celebration. It'll just all kind of like pull up in a list. Oh, even, mm -hmm. even better. That's exactly even, yes. today. exactly <laughs> exactly. So when I'm trying to like think of something that I want to you know talk about or you know business holidays or books. So say, you know, like I want to start, you know, if I have an Amazon account and I want to start doing books, um, I'll say, you know, well, I'll type books in the national today and it'll say like, this day is national book day. This is international book day. This day is read a book to a kid day. And I'm like, all right, I should post the book links on these days because it's already something that's going to be trending. And I don't have to decide when I'm going to post this stuff. 
because this just gives me an idea of you know, when people are going to be talking about it anyway. And that also helps when the media is checking you out to show that you are on top of things and what's going on. You're talking about trending things and current things and relevant things because they know, you know, that it's Apple Day. <laughs> But, you know, to show that you know and that you're on top of things and that you're very current um, lets them know, you know, um, that you, you know, are active in your industry and not just you know, waiting um, for someone to approach you. You're actively giving information, sharing, you're staying on top, you're staying current, staying relevant. That's very mediagenic. That keyword. Again. <laughs> that's very like mediagenic. I like yes, that. That's very mediagenic to be sharing, um, to show that you're on top of like current things and current news when they're checking that out. Um, they would pick someone who seems current over someone who posts, you know, really funny reels over someone who's talking about a topic that's trending right now. You know? Right. And like someone following or like following a trend, but also <laughs> contributing to a trend. And they're not like clout chasing. Or anything like yes, that. Yes, active, real <laughs> content. Because, you know, you just can't fake content anymore. Like, everybody knows all the tricks, you know. <laughs> you do it or not. And, you know, I know it sounds cliche, but everything is content. Once you start once you start to realize that everything is content, while we're sitting here, you know, talking um, on the podcast, I am also recording myself on the side. Um, for content, and I actually have it on time lapse. So even though we've been talking for a while, this video is probably like two seconds because time, right. time lapse does. <laughs> right, I'll be like, but oh, you man, know, it could be like five minutes. It's yeah, five yeah, I'll use it in the background. You know, I'll use it um, like in a in a YouTube vlog. You know, or or in a reel. You know, um, right now I have it this way. So sometimes I'll get uh, you know this angle. Because mm -hmm. this is good for YouTube, and I'm trying to get my YouTube game up. Because YouTube is where the money yeah, is, right? I'm trying to right. Be better about that right. But you know, I always try to remember to oops, upside down. Sorry, I'll show y'all this thing. Oh, it's upside down. Yeah, I'm taking some tips for you right now. I'm doing a no. whole time lapse and while so we're recording then, too. There you go. So. I always remember to do some this way as well because this is good for like stories and reels and everything. Like reels is my jam. Reels can grow you if you get consistent with it but a lot of times i just like to record myself doing stuff either in time lapse or just my hands like eating or writing something listen take the sound out put a trending sound behind it and a caption it'll do numbers yeah now when you when i do that time lapse right now i'm talking I mean, to you you just gave me the idea so <laughs> you get a quick time yeah i'm terrible at getting content and then i'm yeah. mad i, find when I don't I'm have content there. When I plan out my content, some of my best reels are so random. They're so random. I'm like, really? This is what y'all want? Like, this is my air freshener in my car. But then I'll go all in and, you know, I'm doing transitions and dropping knowledge and, like, nobody's really trying to mess with it. So, like, no, just give the people what they want. You know, I'd say definitely do. So, this is the two things that I do. I do reels that are trending with the trendy sound because that goes a long way. It really does. I do like the voiceover ones, the ones that are kind of easy to remember. I don't try to go into the long ones and everything. I got down with that. A lot of times I'll do them in the car, in the car line, waiting on my kids, you know. So I just kind of get them in, get them out because you just never know what will really hit. Um, and I used to delete them when they didn't do well. But what I noticed is that a lot of times something won't do well. And then that sound will start to trend again. And then it, then it will hit. So don't delete your stuff. Um, and then another thing is that when creating content, I've learned to create, focus more on creating evergreen content, right? Because I want to be mediagenic. And when the media is checking me out. I want them to see my good stuff, you know, not only am I fun and laughing on reels, but I can be serious and I can talk about things and, you know, talking about something relevant, just really kind of showcasing myself. Um, and then also for like future clients and leads, like if somebody is checking you out, what do you want them to know about you? What kind of things do you want them to find? And the way that I realized this is that I was looking for a business coach because everybody needs a coach. <laughs> I was looking for a business coach, and there was this lady that I was betting. And once I realized that I was interested in her, do you know, I stayed up all night binging her stuff. And I looked at so much of her, her stuff. And a lot of it 
was evergreen content that maybe she posted a year or two ago that was still very relevant. And they were there were Easter eggs of a sort, you know what I mean? Like right. intentionally when put there intentionally evergreen. evergreen. Not to cut you off, but like yes. people that don't know what that is. Like yes. what is evergreen. An evergreen post? Always good, always relevant. So the opposite of evergreen is seasonal. Right, season. I'm just talking about something that's just in that season that's relevant for them. Evergreen means that this content is always good. So, for instance, um, evergreen content that I would put out about myself would be like my backstory, you know, who I am and how I came into the NPR. Or I would do like a video or a post about, um, you know, how do you know if you're ready for a publicist, right? Because that is like the number one thing that people ask me. So why not create content in a hundred different kinds of ways that answer that question? Because a lot of times that's what people are coming for or they want some clarity for. So no matter when you see my page or how far down you go or how far back that was, it's still good. You know what I mean? It's, it's still what I do. It still makes sense. It still answers your question as opposed to something that's just kind of, you know, temporary for right now, holiday-ish. You know, you definitely want to have some evergreen things in there because the people that you really want to be checking you out are going to, that's the things that they're going to be looking for. That's the things that they're going to be looking through your reels and seeing what you talk about, seeing if you stay on topic, you know, seeing if you get a little crazy with it because sometimes, you know, that might not match their brand, you know, you might not be safe for them. Um, sometimes you might be too safe. I know some places I'm too safe for it. Like, girl, no. You can't come on here. We cuss too much. That's the point. Okay. Listen, I do, just not on the podcast. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, you know. Oh, y'all like, like that. <laughs> right. I don't know y'all like that. So, you know, just not necessarily a good fit, but people can kind of check you out and see how you are and kind of how you vibe just by a lot of your evergreen content. Which is why I want to really grow my YouTube and other people because that is like the king of evergreen content. YouTube, yeah. things live on YouTube Damn, yeah. forever and ever and ever, you know, and it's always good. YouTube is, YouTube is going to be like a whole TV station one day, and you're going to have to pay, sure, you're going to have to pay right to get your channel. Yeah, so go ahead and get in and get on your ground right now, because YouTube is still not that, not that old. It's still not that old. Like, think about it. Gary, Gary V, Gary Vaynerchuk started out on YouTube, like he was one of the first YouTubers. And like we still yeah. look at him, and he's still well, relevant. You and from the beginning. I, right, so YouTube is not that old, you know. It's you can still get into YouTube and, and do a little numbers, right? mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's the biggest piece of content. So I, I find that when you make a big piece of content, then you can chop and screw that down into you know 101 pieces. You know, a lot of times we're trying to do those individual pieces and trying to make something. But if you do one big piece of content like this podcast, podcast podcast episode you know how many things you could do you could do screenshots you could do captions you know yeah. you can do um use headliner to break it up like it's just you can just take it out the video out and do audio like there's just so many things that you could do you could take the create a sound the, that makes you viral you could I see create, so much right? you could do a, a gif you could do a blog <laughs> post you know um one of the things that i want to do after my podcast off the press podcast on YouTube <laughs> is I want to do a um, an Instagram uh, after show on off the record. So you know we nice and formal on off the press, but then we get on off the record and we do our sidebar conversations. Because one thing about people in the media, they like to talk. <laughs> They like to talk, but we try to stay on topic. But when we want to do like little sidebar things, I'm like, I want to do it so bad, but I'm trying to give people the information here. <laughs> so, yeah, and that's another thing, you know, just another way to, you know, kind of create more content is, is to spin on something else. So, there's just so many ways to, you know, just be out there and to be mediagenic. Um, and so it's not about being perfect for the media. It's about, you know, kind of being present and being transparent and being consistent. You don't have to be perfect. We see a lot of people. Look at, look at the eyewitnesses on the news all the time. <laughs> right. The media, the, the not, orders, I ain't got time for that. They have the people who are entertaining who have something to say. Right. And so we just right. need to make sure that that's us. Oh, yeah. Most most definitely. Like, because um, I know I am the worst with content for, like, being able to get stuff that uh, is relevant. It's going to be huge. And getting the information from you has been massive as well. Um, I did crack open another beer. Um, 
don't know what happened. I did. I will. I was gonna say one thing. I tell people is don't try to keep up with the bearded brother. Like I'm trying to get you home safe. I am at home. Well, I was gonna. I had like for a minute. So well, I, I picked people, three that I was gonna showcase. <laughs> you know, um, and so he was supposed to bring them to me every now and again. But you know, we'll see. Maybe I'll just show, maybe I'll just show you the other ones. Oh yeah, but this is still hitting. Well. Though I'm not even like, still hitting. <laughs> Sometimes you just need that one. Like mm-hmm. that's the lovely thing about the beer community. Sometimes you just need one to get you right. Yeah, and I used to hate. I used to hate beer too. But you know, that was before I realized that all beer were not created equal, and that all liquor. <laughs> that ain't real. That's something else. Like it's not the same. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's a different monster. Let me tell you what I recently learned that I have been slumming it with tequila because I went to Mexico in September. Mm-hmm. Our girls trip, birthdays, and Virgo power. We did we went to school, right? In Virgo. Yes. <laughs> so when they say it is always shot o'clock in Tulum, it is always shot o'clock in Tulum. Like there's shots everywhere. I'm pretty sure you get shots at the mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> they said it's the water, the official water of Mexico. And they're not lying. Like, but listen, so smooth. You can take tequila shots in Mexico, like, all day and still be okay. Like, you could be feeling good, but not sick. And I was like, man, oh, maybe it's yeah. just vacation vibes. You know, maybe I'm just turned. But you know what? Came back and had some tequila from here, and it was kerosene. Like, I was like, this is not the same. It hurt. <laughs> oh, it, hurt. it stunk. Like I was like, was I drinking this all this time? Like I didn't. It was fine until I went to Mexico and had really nice tequila, really pure. And I'm like, man, like what else are we slumming it on over here? We don't know. <laughs> well, quite a few things, really. It's just like mm-hmm. you go to the culture where it's like made. It's gonna yes. be yes. tequila is yes. Hispanic Latin based. Yes. So you go to the Latin based country like Mexico. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I was like, this is not the same recipe. <laughs> it's not the same recipe. Yeah. Yeah. They, but even that first tastes like that's like that's there's a different. It's different. Yeah. They have it there, but I feel like it's different. I had a bag of Doritos there, and it was better than the Doritos here. Like I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand. I like they. That. Were thicker, like they use a local cord or maze or something. Like it's just different. And their bag is full all the way to the no, end. no, no. The bag was not full. But listen, they don't even play with you. They don't even hold you. They don't even do the air. So you just get a bag of chips in the bottom, and it's just flat at the top, and you just make it work. But not a chip was broken because they were sturdy. <laughs> <laughs> They had, they had the good cornmeal. They had the good cornmeal. Whatever they make the tequila with, they make the Doritos with. <laughs> they fried theirs on full seventy five. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's, so, that's yeah. That's one. different. All beer is not equal, and all tequila is not. Equal. It is not. <laughs> that's why I'm so excited to go to Belgium and Germany. I was like, oh, I can go to the quote unquote epicenter of nice. beer one of these nice. days. I'm so excited for a trip like that. I'm trying to figure it That's out awesome. now. So are I might you, end up living over there. Are you a micro brewer? Actually, I do brew. I brew at uh, Happ and Harry's. Okay. Yeah, no, 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 so, it is. Uh, it's a uh, brewery out here. It's a uh, hmm. bunch of local. It's a local brew uh, brewery nice. here. So I'm learning that now. So I'm actually like in the space and things like that. That's why I asked you earlier. I was like, who do you look for? But um, my last question is: You mentioned about uh, star power, like, and you have the ability to find that. Like, what's some things that you do? Like, look at you, like, oh, this person's got potential, but they just need this. You can be as honest <laughs> or as brutal as you want, because like people need to know that because you don't yeah. know. Yeah. Like, oh, I got it. I'm like, I'm tall, dark, handsome. I'm tall, yeah. well. <laughs> Mm. Usually, people. Yeah. I would say it's usually like the talent, you know. Like you can tell when someone's really special, you know, kind of what they do. You know, you can have a bunch of 
say poets, you know, spoken word poets. You have a spoken, but then there's always one that really stands out. You know, is it, but you can't you can't really put your finger on it. But you know, like when it's his turn, he gonna go off. <laughs> you know, it's posture, kind of body language, kind of confidence. I think when you're confident inside, it shows outside. You know that you're comfortable. You know, um, and it just makes you feel more authentic. So you know, authenticity is it goes a long way. And people think that being authentic means telling all your business on Facebook and crying and stuff. But I'm like, no, that's no. Being authentic means just being who you really are. You know, if you're a little bit goofy, be a little bit goofy. If you're super formal and you're trying to be cool and hey, dude, peace, like it's not going to work. Like, just really be who you are because people can tell when you're faking it and it makes people feel uncomfortable. Because if we feel like you're not really being yourself, we feel like you might be lying to. You know what I mean? That's why I tell people to be authentic with the media, right? You can't be one way with the media and then another way on your social media or you know on your things because you know people say well my business brand and my personal brand we don't have that anymore honey (laughs) your business brand is your personal brand your personal brand is your business brand and so you know if you're a little you know out there with your personal brand but you're trying to have like a a really polished business brand it's not going to really work for you in the long run and it'll kind of steer media off because they're not going to know which one they're going to get you know you're going to be professional or you're going to get the twerk in because we saw a little of both but we're not sure but in case you decide to twerk we're going to pass on you because we can't take that risk you know so it really just like you know it's it's almost like being a celebrity now, you know, like celebrities can't just say and do what they want to anymore because they're under the eye. Like regular people could get canceled too. Like regular people get canceled every day, you know? Um, and I think that makes people kind of fearful. Yeah. They get kind of fearful. People know when they get dragged online, you say the wrong thing. They'll listen. They'll go right on LinkedIn and find your employer and drag you. Right. <laughs> so, you know, yeah, people are kind of fearful like that because, you know, when you are in the public eye, you know, it does put you up for scrutiny. But, I mean, if you are who you say you are, you can stand ten toes down on it, you know. Um, it shouldn't really bother you. But as far as the star power thing, you just can tell when someone is really comfortable and they got it. They got a little sway. They got a little confidence, you know. Not only are they able to deliver their message, but they're able to do it with, like, some personality and entertainment because, remember, you know, Entertainment is media genetic. You can have someone who's very smart and intelligent and, you know, sitting there spewing things like a lump, you know, and people will not listen. But then you can have somebody crazy who don't know what they're talking about, but they're real animated and they're loud and they're using words that they just made up. <laughs> they might be politicians, you know, but people can't stop looking because it's just so doggone entertaining. <laughs> what you going to so, say yeah. next? <laughs> right. You have to kind of find that that uh, happy balance in it before. But again, star power is inside people, you know. And it's not something that you're born with or not. I think it's just when you get to the point to where you're ready, um, you know, for the attention. And, you know, you're ready for that to be, you know, shine on you. It's just people who are in their season, you know. And sometimes they don't know it. You know, they don't know it. Hey, sometimes I don't even know it about me. <laughs> it's just kind of one of those things of entrepreneurship, you know. Um, but, yeah, I just kind of get attracted to people, you know, like, oh, I don't want to work with that person. I don't know why or kind of what it is. And usually I'll just kind of ask someone, you know, is there something that you're working on or some kind of goal that you have towards or, you know, something big that you're thinking of doing, but you're not sure, you know, that's usually kind of the question that I lead with, <laughs> with somebody that I feel like I might should work with. And they're like, actually, blah, 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 blah. So, I meet a lot of awesome people. I love interesting people. Like that is like the best. I love meeting dope people and you know talking to people, especially our people, black people, especially us who are doing things like that are uncommon and in professions and fields that are uncommon. I think that's how the media started reaching out to me a lot because you know I can find you a black ballerina in a second, baby. <laughs> Just give me a minute, you know. Um, you know, a black French wine connoisseur I found before, you know, ice skaters, people kind of doing extraordinary things, um, or doing ordinary things in extraordinary ways and representing for our cultures where I really have a passion for, 
you know, making sure that we get seen because there's so many people who like have a great story, a great product, great art, and people just don't know about them. And I'm always like, how do people not know about this person or that place or that thing? And so I just took it as my personal charge to make sure that, you know, that those people are seen and heard. I feel like that's what I'm here for to do. Um, I like it. I don't like to be on the forefront. I have to if I want to grow. Um, and like I tell people with visibility, it's, it's weird. You know, some people, we don't we don't like it. Um, and we we make it the last thing kind of that we do in our business with going live and things. But think about it this way. It's kind of selfish for you to not do it. Because if you feel like you're here and you have a mission and you have a purpose, it's also your duty to make sure your people can find you. You have to stand on top of the mountain or the hill for them to be able to find you. You can't say that, you know, you have these dream clients or these people you're trying to bless. And you hide up on the rock. How, how are they supposed to find you? You just have to risk it all, you know, and find that high platform to get where they can see you. And that's how I see publicity, you know, stand, standing on the top of the mountain so people can see and, and hear you um, for what you're trying to get across. You know, if you try to hide and do that, you know, they're not going to see you. They're not going to hear you. You could have a great message, a life-saving message, but if they cannot see or hear you, you're, you're not doing your job. You can't do it. So it's our duty. I love that. Purpose entrepreneurs. You, gotta, you have to get out there. How they going to find No, I definitely agree with that. And like, before I wrap up, I call this last like moment my cheers section, where I give cheers to the people I'm inter- interviewing about what they're doing and how impactful it is for our community, and you pretty much cheers yourself, which I'm glad you did. So, but I do want to send my cheers as well. I, awesome. I've been watching from afar. I like to watch. Thank you. And people move just in their world, just like from afar, like just see what they're doing and everything like that. And I've been sitting here watching you just cooking up with the content and. You're doing all the so folks. You, you've like, seen the good, bad, work. and the ugly. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, and like, but I love that. It's like, that's the kind of content I want to see. That's the kind of work I want to see. And being able to see yeah. you do that has been awesome. Mm-hmm. It's been it's Yeah, been same with you as well. I watch you grow Thank you. and pivot you and do things and like. never give up. And listen, the only way to fail in entrepreneurship is to quit. <laughs> right. It's no, really the only I way to fail. That's why there's so many people who are in business and doing well, and they don't have good customer service or products. But you know what? They won't close. <laughs> right. So uh, yeah, yeah like, the only way to fail it, in entrepreneurship is to quit. Oh yeah, it's like oh never that. But it always throws me off when people are like, oh man, I see you. Oh me me you know me. <laughs> and so like yeah. I do I have to work on that. There's days where I'm like, oh I'm that. I'm that dude. Yeah. Sure. And there's other days like, oh, I don't know. Man, what do you want from me? You said seven months ago, it was fantastic. I was like, <laughs> you listen to me? Right. That's yeah. Crazy. Oh, yeah. When people say, oh, oh my gosh, I follow you on Instagram. I'm like, you do? <laughs> I feel like nobody really, yeah, I feel like nobody. Do you look at problem? Like, I went to a <laughs> festival last year called Bear and Flow. It's a black owned festival for black beer drinkers and people of the sort. And I went up there and people were like recognizing me and then they were recognizing like my fiance at the time. I'm like, oh, you're the Peter Brothers fiance. It like threw yeah. her off and it threw me off too. I was like, right. What, what, what we got I thought I had a square book on time. Like, yeah. Just because people don't say things, like I tell people they see you. Yeah, they see you. and they see you. It, it blew my mind and blew her mind. I was just, I was just like, yeah, they can't that, you know, those you. are like little confirmations, you know, to let oh, you know yeah, that you're doing the right thing. Being, for sure. Yeah. But, um, Usually one of those comes along at the time that you need it the most as you're feeling like, I don't know about this. Or, right. And then somebody be like, oh my God, it's you. I know you like, it's me. Nobody else is but me. Me by myself. <laughs> one beer. Nice. One beer. <laughs> one beer. Literally one beer. Oh yeah. Well, I guess that's over. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, but yeah, I think dude. Well, people home. that actually need P 
PR? How can they reach out to you and know they need PR? Because I know you probably are real like, oh, I'm working with you or I'm not working with you. Kind of the yes. highest tell your confidence. So like, how can the people reach out to you when they are ready? Or when they're yes. already ready, but they need that next step. Yes. So my website address is my first and last name, AishaBrightly.com. And that's the website that you can get like more information about me and like what I do and um, what it what it uh, could look like for you to have a publicist. And then I also have a website called mediagenicmarket.com because you know that's my favorite word, mediagenic. Um, and on that, you can find tools and resources to help polish your business or your brand, get media ready. So there are tons of Canva templates on there, uh, graphics, email newsletter templates, logo templates, um, because a lot of times people say, you know, I'm not ready. I need help with this. I need help with that. So I put all these tools and resources into one place so that people can go there, find what they need to polish their brands. These are things that I have handpicked where I'm like, listen, this is good. This is cute. This works. Not the other things. Just listen to me. Um, And so I put all those tools and resources into that website. Um, And a lot of the things on there are just free for people to, you know, look at. And if you click on it, you know, you can purchase things. But then I I am also at the top of the year coming out with a paid side of that where I will be um, having uh, different groups that you can join and you'll be able to get um, media requests. Like when the media contacts me directly and they're looking for people, I'm going to be putting it there first. Um, I'm also a professional user of Hero. That's Help a Reporter Out, um, helpareporter.com. That is where uh, most media publish uh, where they're looking for sources. You know, hey, I'm writing a story about this. I'm looking for someone to comment about that, you know. Um, so I go through those and I pick out the best of the best of those. That's how I got the connection with Angela Bassett. So I know what I'm doing on there. Um, so I'm doing that for people, you know, making sure that you have that. Um, I also have my media contacts list that I'm going to be sharing. I'm also going to be sharing a list of podcasts, um, podcasts that are accepting guests with the links. I'm also going to be sharing um, award links because what a lot of people don't realize is that when you receive an award for your business um, or for yourself, that is positive publicity. And, you know, there's tons and tons of awards all over the place that you should be nominating yourself and others for. Um, So I'll be sharing those as well. Um, And even speaking engagements is another form of publicity of actually one we can get paid a lot, you know. Um, So I'll be posting call for speakers, call presenters, pretty much everything that you need to Um, be able to DIY your publicity with the guidance of a publicist. Because what has happened is that when I work for uh, people one-on-one, I can only manage three clients at a time because it's just me by myself all day. One computer, one mouse (laughs) by myself. (laughs) I don't have an agency. (laughs) Right. We don't know you. Right. So what I'm doing is I'm doing kind of like a publicity share to where I am, you know, giving my tools and resources to a lot of people, you know, so that they are able to share the expense of having a publicist because we are not inexpensive. You know, it's a luxury, not a must. Um, And it just works better for people to be able to kind of share. And so you still get me. I still um, meet with everyone. You can do one-on-ones with me. You know, I get on, I do training. We talk. Like, I'm still very much so there, but it's the only way that I can help, like, the masses of the people (laughs) um, all at once without burning myself out or just, you know, cornering, taking the three uh, clients who have the biggest budget because those are usually the difficult clients. And um, usually the people with a smaller budget are more of my people. So I'm like, how can I, you know, help? the mass of the people in a way um, that is that makes sense financially for me and that I can sustain. And so um, it's with mediagenicmarket.com. That's how I'm going to be doing that. And I'm also launching um, at the top of the year um, what would be uh, like a speed pitching kind of thing. So I have media who come, we get into like a Zoom room, everybody breaks out and they have their opportunity to pitch um, a story or a message um, to the media there. And I feel like that is a really fun way and a direct way to get people directly to the media because I was like, at the end of the day, what do people want from me? They want to get to the media and tell their stories. Well, listen, let me make this introduction and back up. So I'm going to be doing that virtually um, 
next year. And that's going to be a monthly thing. And every month will be a different theme. So people will know what the theme is. Um, and then they'll pitch stories according to that theme. So you don't have to be in a particular industry um, to participate each month. You just have to have a story that's relevant with the theme of that month. I love that. So, yeah, that's how people are going to be working with me for uh, 2023. So that's something new, but I'm very excited. I've spent um, the past two years kind of figuring out how um, that's going to work. And I have it. I have a team on board um, who's helping me. And so I'm really excited to be able to serve in that kind of capacity. Um, and it's going to be lit because we are going to be doing a publicity and press trip to Tulum, Mexico at the end of the year for the people who are participating in my program. I'm um, linked up with our um, photographer that I met there that I had a branding shoot with no vacay needed um, shout out to Lamar and um, he is a part of the consortium what's up, Lamar? <laughs> right what's up Lamar over in makeup um, he's a part of consor of a consortium of black entrepreneurs called black in Tulum and this is a group of uh, black entrepreneurs who went over to Tulum like during the pandemic um, and loved it enough to either stay or come back to the U.S. and get their stuff and go back. So these are the real black digital nomads who really like have pulled the plug and said, listen, I'm tired of the rat race. I'm out. Um, and so they're over there, you know, working together, doing their different businesses, doing different experiences, yacht experiences, food experiences, cultural experiences. So of course I went over there. It's not like me to not network. But I'm taking a group of entrepreneurs back, and we're going to do Tulum, Mexico, and we're going to um, be going to different spots, um, interviewing the owners. We're going to be doing content. Um, we're going to be working on our content. Um, and then we're also going to be uh, getting a little press ourselves. So they'll be getting interviewed um, by media um, over in um, Playa Riviera. <laughs> Riviera Maya and the Riviera Maya as well. So once we come back, we'll say that we're international. Okay. So, yeah. uh, babe, I know, right? Listen, you want to go to I'll talk to her after this. <laughs> we'll make some work for sure. So listen, yeah. I gave you the scoop on all the good stuff. A lot of these things I'm yes. announcing at the end of November um, at some of my events. I'm having a Buy Black Friday mixer, November 25th. November 26th, a small business Saturday, and I'm doing a uh, business showcase. And then I'm doing an Entrepreneur Sunday where everyone is invited to come to Zion Christian Ministries, where the Small Business Saturday event was because a lot of us entrepreneurs, we need some prayer. And we're having a special altar call and prayer for people to get prayed over on their businesses, over their ideas, over their fears, over their hangups. Um, so a lot of people felt like they really needed that. And I was able to arrange that with um, Bishop Johnson. Chris Johnson, who we talked about. Um, and then that Monday, we're going to be doing Cyber Monday. So I'll be featuring um, different ads and commercials on my Modern Noir website, which is my local community um, organization page. And so, you know, people can shop from that, watch videos, commercials. Um, so I have a lot coming up right now. But the kickoff for that is uh, the Wakanda Gala. We're going to be plugging all of my events at the end, <laughs> which is November 10th in uh, Murfreesboro. And it is an invitation-only event, but consider this your invitation <laughs> if you're watching. Um, and we're going to be doing an advanced screening of Wakanda forever. Um, the day before that, it opens in the theaters. And also, there's a pre-show gala where we're going to be dressed up. There's going to be face painting, Afro beats. Um, we have cosplayers that are coming through. So, and these are all like local people. I found local black cosplayers. So, listen, it's gonna be that is dope. I see. I didn't even know that's that was a space, really. Yeah, it's listen, I know they're out there, but I didn't know Nashville had a space. So, there, I there's just a small space. Today. Yep, there's definitely a small space of that's black awesome. cosplayers. So, go get it. Hey, I ain't, so, yeah. like you said, just reach out. I'm reaching out now. So, you need out. craft beer connoisseur anyways. Like, I'm the gala. You know how to, you know how to get in contact with me. I, I do. And I actually, host. it's so funny that you reached out Food to me. Pairs. No, it's actually so funny that you reached out to me because we haven't really talked in a while. But I was planning on reaching out to you. I just didn't have like my, when I come to people, I like to come correct, like all the facts. So I was waiting on that. But I am um, in talks of working with two uh, places here in Murfreesboro that are breweries. And so um, we are partnering to come up with some events there. And I wanted to pick your brain 
Because, like, how could I not? You're right down the street, you know, about some ideas right. and things that we could do here um, at these at these places that, you know, have these spaces. And, you know, I'm all for the culture. So, you know, a, a black beer event is definitely <laughs> going down. Right, we'll talk you know, about that after the recording, for sure. Without you. <laughs> oh, yeah. We'll talk about that after the recording. But y'all yeah. already know how to follow your boy, the Beater Brother, on all social medias. Check out my website, thebeaterbrother.com. My YouTube is on there. Get some merch like this dope ass sweatshirt. It's nice. starting to cool down, y'all. So get you a hoodie, get you a sweatshirt. Maybe get two because your girl might try to steal one. Right. Or doodle or whoever you're with. Your partner's going to try to take it regardless. So make sure you get two. Um, and definitely, like I said, I do events, I post and talk about just beer and everything like that, and just how to get black people in the space and comfortably in the space. So they know nice. what they're doing out there when they go to their first brewery. They know the beer brother has taken care of me. I'm good. So as always, expert. yes, I'm <laughs> an expert. Some of I know some. You know what I mean? <laughs> but um, as always, y'all, grab your friends, grab good ass beer, and of course, drink up.